a year's, than all the oil reserves on Earth. This isn't science fiction, it's happening. Using its upcoming Long March 9 heavy lift rockets, China will assemble a 1 km wide solar array in geostationary orbit, beaming continuous energy back to Earth via microwaves. Join us as we explore the Voyager 1 just made an impossible encounter in deep space. Let's find out. This project has been compared to building the Three Gorges Dam in space. That dam, the largest hydropower project on Earth, generates 100 billion kilowatt towns of electricity annually. Now imagine that, but 36 of 0 km above Earth, free from atmospheric interference, harvesting sunlight 10 times more intense than on the ground. The implications are staggering. If successful, China could gain control over a near limitless energy source, fundamentally reshaping global power dynamics. While the US, Europe, and Japan have explored similar technology, China is moving aggressively toward implementation. If China masters space-based solar power first, it will dictate the future of global energy security, forcing the rest of the world to play catch-up. The next great power struggle may not be on Earth, it may be fought in orbit. China was once a bystander in the space race. In 1949, its economy was too weak to sustain a serious space program. The Great Leap Forward spiraled into catastrophe. Millions starved, industry crumbled, and progress stalled. The Cultural Revolution followed as scientists were hunted down and purged. Even with Soviet assistance, China's first rocket, the T-7M, barely got off the ground in 1960. When ties with the USSR fractured, they were left in the dark. But today, after decades of relentless growth, China commands the second largest space budget in the world. That budget has allowed it to carry out quite a few impressive missions. In 2004, China declared its intent to explore the moon. By 2007, Changyu-1, developed with European cooperation, had mapped its surface. But this was just the beginning. In 2013, Changyu-3 soft-landed, making China only the third nation to reach the lunar surface. That wasn't enough. In 2018, it set its sights on the moon's far side, a place no spacecraft had ever touched. Landing there required solving a major problem. Direct communication with Earth was impossible. The only way was through a relay satellite, positioned beyond the moon. Despite the challenge, Chang'e 4 landed flawlessly. It even carried a biosphere experiment containing seeds, soil, air, and fruit fly eggs. For the first time, plants sprouted on the moon. They died within a day, but the experiment sent a clear message. China was thinking far beyond short-term exploration. The missions continued. Chang'e 5 and Chang'e 6 successfully returned lunar samples to Earth, proving China's growing capability. But collecting rocks isn't the end goal. In 2019, China announced plans for a lunar research station by the 2030 S and has since invited other nations to join. Thirteen countries, including Russia, Pakistan, and South Africa, have already signed on. The project mirrors NASA's Artemis Accords, which also gathered nations for lunar exploration. China insists it's not a competition, even extending invitations to the U.S. and Europe. But American law restricts U.S.-China space collaboration, making such a partnership unlikely. European involvement, however, remains a possibility. Construction of the International Lunar Research Station is set to begin after 2028. Whether or not the West joins, China is moving forward. Its ambitions are clear, not just visiting the moon, but establishing a long-term presence. In 2011, the U.S. government made a bold move to block China's progress in space. The Wolf Amendment barred Nasser from working with China, fearing that collaboration would allow Beijing to exploit American rocket technology. The U.S. didn't want China piggybacking off its advancements, nor did it want to risk China reaching key milestones like the Moon or Mars first. But the ban didn't slow China down. If anything, it pushed them to accelerate their plans. 
By 2021, China had already made history. The Tianwen-1 mission, meaning questioning the heavens, successfully entered Mars's orbit, deploying an advanced rover named Zhurong to the surface. This was a massive achievement. Mars landings are notoriously difficult. Many nations have tried and failed. Even NASA, the undisputed leader in Martian exploration, has lost multiple spacecraft to the planet's thin atmosphere and unpredictable terrain. China, on its first attempt, pulled it off. Zhurong wasn't just there to take pictures. It carried instruments capable of detecting subsurface water, a crucial resource for future Mars colonies. It also had a laser-equipped camera, similar to NASA's Perseverance rover, capable of vaporizing rocks to analyze their composition. This was just the beginning. China's next step, a Mars sample return mission scheduled for 2031, almost a full decade before NASA's equivalent mission, which is still in early development. The implications are massive. If China returns Martian samples first, they will gain an enormous scientific advantage. Studying these samples in Earth-based labs, far more advanced than anything a rover could carry, could reveal vital clues about Mars's history, potential habitability, and the feasibility of extracting resources. Understanding which materials can be sourced on site is a critical step in building a long-term presence on Mars. But gathering data and retrieving samples is only part of the plan. To build anything substantial, whether on the Moon or Mars, China needs an affordable, powerful launch vehicle. That's where the Long March 9 comes in. This super-heavy rocket is designed to carry up to 150,000 kilograms into low Earth orbit, matching the capability of SpaceX's Starship. Initial versions, expected by 2033, will be single-use, but future models will be re- and this changes everything. Right now, launching a Long March rocket costs about $3.00 per kg. A reusable Long March 9 could slash that to $1.50, cutting costs in half. That's the difference between a moon base being an expensive experiment or a sustainable reality. It's the key to large-scale Mars missions, space stations, and deep space infrastructure. And China does have deep space infrastructure capabilities. China has its space station, Tiangong, or Heavenly Palace. Smaller than the ISS, it houses three astronauts in a three-module setup, compared to the ISS's seven in 18 modules. But size isn't everything. This station, launched in 2021 after prototype modules were tested in 2011 and 2016, is a fully operational orbital base, hosting spacewalks and research missions. Sharing its orbit is Zuntian, China's upcoming space telescope. Unlike Hubble, which requires complex servicing missions, Zuntian can be docked with Tiangong for repairs. This makes it a crucial tool for deep space observation, one that China alone controls. The reason China built Tiangong, it had no choice. U.S. law barred China from participating in the ISS, fearing espionage and stolen technology. Yet, scientists on both sides wanted cooperation. When China returned moon samples, NASA researchers petitioned Congress for access. China was willing to share, but politics stood in the way. Tiangong, however, is open to international collaboration. While no foreign astronauts have visited, China has approved nine research projects from 17 countries, including UN-backed experiments. Scientists rarely care about national borders. Governments do, though. And in space, trust is fragile. But one thing is clear. China is laying the groundwork for a future where it has a lasting presence across the solar system. China has its sights set on Jupiter. By 2030, it plans to send probes to explore the gas giant and its moons, one of the most ambitious deep space missions ever attempted. But this is just one piece of a much larger strategy. China also aims to launch 40,000 satellites into Earth's orbit, a direct challenge to Starlink's dominance in global communications. Beyond that, Chinese scientists have outlined a vision that stretches to the end of the century. Their proposal, 
a vast network of space infrastructure spanning the solar system, asteroid mining, ice harvesting for fuel, and supply chains reaching across planetary orbits. This isn't an official government policy, but it reveals the scale of what China space planners are considering. While they outwardly promote international cooperation, their long-term ambitions suggest a future where they control key space resources. U.S. intelligence agencies are watching closely. A 2021 DNI report warned that China could surpass the U.S. in space dominance if it continues at this pace. But there's a major obstacle. Funding. NASA's budget dwarfs China's, with the U.S. spending $73 billion, $200 million, zero cents annually, compared to China's $14 billion, $500 million, zero cents. The U.S. still invests more in space than the rest of the world combined. Yet China plays by different rules. It completes projects at a fraction of the cost, with lower labor expenses and fewer safety regulations. If e efficiency outweighs raw spending, the balance of power could shift faster than anyone expects. At some point, space will need more than competition. It will need rules. As nations establish research outposts and permanent stations beyond Earth, the question of resource rights will become unavoidable. Who gets access to lunar ice? Who controls asteroid mining operations? Without a common framework, conflicts are inevitable. Right now, the U.S. and China are forming rival alliances, each gathering partners for their lunar ambition. But in the long run, space cannot be divided into competing blocks forever. A single set of laws agreed upon by all major spacefaring nations could prevent disputes before they begin. That doesn't mean the rivalry will end. Neither the U.S. nor China is likely to stop pushing for dominance. Competition is human nature, and both nations will continue striving to outdo each other. But within a shared legal structure, competition wouldn't mean chaos. It would mean progress. And the solar system won't belong to just two powers. A century from now, flags from nations across the world will be planted on the moon, Mars, and beyond. The U.S. and China may lead the charge today, but they won't be alone. The question is whether they will find a way to cooperate, or if the race for space supremacy will define the next era of exploration. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. Tell us your opinions in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the video on your screen for more mind-bending content. Until next time, keep gazing at the stars. This is Cosmic Inquiries, signing off.